pretty high you now bad exercises for the joint and this one it's my favorite right what's bad exercise i hear that all the time i mean even as a trainer now especially as a physical therapist oh what shouldn't i do well i mean anything done incorrectly it's a bad exercise right and it's 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 a few that are just bad bad but like you can sit down on a chair and be like oh that was bad right doesn't mean that you cannot sit down anymore we can just improve that right you can walk bad I mean, you can do anything, you can, any kind of exercise doing incorrectly, it's a bad exercise. So that's why here, especially with physical therapy, that's what I really spend a lot of time, education, right? Uh, I don't tell people, you go do this exercise. Because if you do it bad, then you're causing more pain than me helping you. So we, we do a lot to where, let's do these exercises correctly. And that's very important. Now, running. Poor technique, that's, we see that all the time. Now, what do you, you think this guy here is hurting? And the knee, I, most likely. Ankle, yeah, I mean, even his face, you can tell he's hurting. Yeah, it's, it's running, it's huge. I mean, if you're not a runner, you don't have to worry about it, but uh, again, if, if you're not a runner, but you like to walk, then, then we try to look at what, what your walking style is, right? It's for runners, we have to look at the runner. For walkers, we have to look at walking because we want to make sure that nothing that you're doing is making more pain than actually helping you. And a couple of, at the end, jumping. Stay away from jumping. If, if, if we're having any joint pain, that is towards the end, if we ever get to jumping, right? I mean, if, if jumping is what you want to do as a hobby or a goal, maybe we can get there. But to start with, I would say stay, stay, stay away from jumping. Put a question mark with tennis. Like the rest is here, that's, that's perfect. Right? I thought that was a good exercise. It's great. You just got to be careful with it. You cannot go to tennis and start immediately with, especially if you were a tennis player and haven't played in the past 20 years. Tennis, it's, it's not easy. Oh, you mean ease back into Yeah, it. you have to ease back into anything. Now, I had, on my previous, but I had tennis, I had a couple of other sports too, soccer, all these things. You know, it's, it's and, and any high impact sport, you, we got to ease into it. And any sport that requires a lot of change in directions, such as tennis, right? We got to ease into it. Maybe tennis, it's a goal. We don't start at tennis. Maybe we start at all the other things to get to tennis, right? It's the same as I tell people. Running, it's not what you need right now. Running, it's your future goal. Let's do all these other things to when we can get you to be able to run. Right, so that just to change that mentality on someone, it's it's pretty important. Like yourself, right? You said you started to do these exercises which hurt you. Maybe they were a little bit too too advanced, right? You needed another step in between. So when you finally got to those exercises, they they weren't too bad for you. And now good exercises, right? Best thing you can do pull exercise. I mean, I wish anyone can get access to a pool, but that would be great, right? If you can go to a gym and then that has a pool. I would recommend that every day, right? It's, it's very easy on our joints, right? Only I think 10% of our body weight is what our joints feel when we're inside a pool. So that's, that's great, strongly recommend that bike. Bike is good if you're a biker, right? It's, it's a bit easier on our joint. We get a lot of m motion, a lot of movement in our knees and hips without putting too much weight on it, right? Because we're sitting. We're not really supporting everything that how much we weigh. So walking is good. We got to be a little careful not to push it, right? If you haven't been able to walk much, then we don't go immediately day one, three miles because it's, it's, it's a little too much, right? So I like to start with a little bit other things and then maybe a little bit of s small distance walking, right? We all this thing of walking, you know, I just, how hard can that be? For some of our joints, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's not easy, right? right? Correct. But what I like, I put this functional training, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, I got to exercise, right? I got to do strength training. I got to do all these things. But a functional training, it's a, what I focus a lot here with, some, with, with a lot of my patients, right? And I'll explain to you in a little bit what functional training is, right? And then before change the slide is just range of motion exercises. Just taking all our joints to a full range, right? What we used to do just to kind of warm up. I mean, this is great. If, if we can do this for our shoulders, well, let's do it every day. Because if we don't do this every day, right, and you realize that in the past five years you haven't never had to reach up here and you try, huh, 
wait a second, I can't, I can't even reach up there anymore. Right, so just to take our joints to a full range of motion without pain every day, right? Hips, knees, I mean, it, it, it's great just to make sure that we lubricate, we, 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 we always are able to do this. Now this is functional training, right? So we do things that you have to do anyway. Right? Me giving you a dumbbell and doing some arm curls or all these things. Yeah, good strength training, but do you have to do that every day when you go home? Uh, probably not. Right? But guess what you have to do when you go home? You have to sit, you have to stand, you have to maybe go up and down stairs, and if those things are hurting you, well, let's fix them. Let's make that a little bit easier to where at least all these things that you have to do no matter what, it's not actually working against you. Right? So that's why I spend time to when such as simple as uh, let's sit on the chair uh, you tell someone is like let's do some squats <laughs> whoa you are way too advanced for me yeah but guess what that is that's a squat how many times a day do you sit in, on the chair and stand up a lot that means you're doing a lot of squats but if you're not doing that correctly and that means that we're we're hurting ourselves right so it's kind of just rewarding the a term, you know, you go from a squat, which sounds such an advanced exercise, to let's sit and stand and make that easy on your joints, right? So for anything that you have a hard time with doing at home, we work on it. We make that easier because that's when you, what you're going to have to do anyway when you go home, right? And then when we make this easy, we progress them to a little bit more advanced, okay? Now, when to exercise and when to rest. Exercise and what, what we consider like exercise is like, a daily aerobic condition for like more than 30 minutes a day, right? Now some people be like, well, I work at this place, which means that I stand for more than 30 minutes a day. Is it considered exercise? No, right? We're, what we do for a living, it's not considered exercise. I stand here for 10 hours. If I want to exercise, I have to go outside of my job for another 30 minutes to count as exercise. Right? If you work at a supermarket and all you do all day is stand, you're not exercising all day. Right? Because that's what you do, that's what your body needs to do every day just to maintain what you're doing. Right? In order for it to count a little bit more productive, we have to add that extra 30 minutes a day. And then sometime, right? doesn't mean that 30 minutes non-stop, we, you can divide that. Maybe 10 minutes, you start the day with 10 minutes of a nice walk in the morning, 10 minutes at lunchtime. If you have an hour lunch, you eat a little bit, you go for a nice 10, 15 minutes walk, which is just you and walking as an exercise, not part of your job. Right? Especially with nowadays, most of our job night nowadays are very sedentary, which means that just to get up and walk for 15 minutes is, it's great. It doesn't have to be, 15, maybe start with five minutes, right? As long as we're breaking that sedentary lifestyle, as long as we're breaking that routine, that's exactly what we need to do, right? Now, strength training, three to five days a week. If, you, if you're just starting, maybe start with three, right? Every other day. You always have a day off in between to let our muscles rest and recover, right? That's, that's sometimes when we run into problems. You got all this information, you're ready to go, and then you start too hard. You do it every day, too much, and two weeks later, you're, you can't keep up with that anymore. So you're like, yeah, I gave it a try, but it didn't really work, it was too much for me. That's good, we, we're starting way too much every other day, maybe twice a week, right? Just so we can ease into it. And then as we start to enjoy it, we get all that soreness out of the way, which you expect it immediately. And that's when we can build it up a little bit. Flexibility, that's daily, right? Flexibility, these are just easy stretches. Most of the major muscle groups, if you ever have a question about, oh, I'm not really sure how, can I, how, how I, can I, I can stretch. Nowadays with the technology, it's just Google. Right, just easy, gentle stretches. Right, so I'm, usually I'm not worried about which stretch should I do as long as we're doing some stretches. And th that should be gentle. Right, a stretch should always feel good. If you don't like stretches because they hurt you, you're not doing them right. Right, stretches, I, I, I haven't found anyone who's like, oh, I hate to stretch because it's, it's not comfortable. Well, you're not doing it right, right? A stretch should feel comfortable, that's why you do it. Right? Each, each time we stretch, it should feel comfortable, for, comfortable because we're never really pushing through pain. That's not a stretch anymore. Okay? And then the last one, which was kind of what we we're talking about earlier, do not exercise through pain. 
We're going to have days of a flare-up. We're going to have days where you're just not feeling good. You're having pain to begin with. Just rest. Maybe on, on a day that you have pain, all you do is stretch. Right? And that's where a lot of people run into trouble because they have the old mentality of like, no pain, no gain. I mean, I'm sure you've heard that before. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, uh, yeah, not yeah, not not true anymore, right? Unless you're in the military, that might be different a little bit. But uh, yeah, no pain, no gain. Yeah, don't believe that, right? If it's painful, something it, it's not right. So we're gonna even have to like take it back a little bit and let it get better, or do something about it so where we can kind of get the pain away first, and then we continue with the rest. And then all, all we need, right? If if we know that you've had these kind of pains, the pain is not new, and that's where most people think, oh, well, I'm, I always have pain, so if I don't do anything about it, then I'll never get better. But uh, then we, we, we want to do things that, at, at least for that time, it's not causing any pain, right? What, what we do sometimes, it's we, we create all these pain, because every time you stand up and it hurts, you're telling your brain that standing up hurts, right? Every time you get out of the car and it hurts, you, you're telling your brain that getting out of the car hurts. So the next time you go to get out of the car, well, guess what? The brain is going to get ready for pain because it thinks that it will hurt. Because of the last time it did, why shouldn't it hurt this time? Right? So each time we do something that hurts, we're telling our brain, this is going to hurt. Then the more things we do that hurt, the more we limit in ourselves to things that our brain now is going to get worried. Oh, but I think this is going to hurt next. So what we want to do is trying to do the opposite of that, right? We want to start doing things that don't hurt to kind of tell our brain that, hey, this doesn't hurt anymore. You don't have to be afraid or you don't have to be worried about this, right? So any, ex any gentle thing, just, just kicking, right? Just moving. Any things that doesn't hurt, it's good for the joint, for the knee or hip because we're kind of just getting this attitude and send it to the brain that this is fine, right? This, this doesn't hurt, right? If, 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 if everything we do 